Hey guys, welcome back, Andy here. Um, hopefully I've got some, uh, some useful tips for you today with regards to saving battery life. Um, it's always a hotly debated topic on any new Android phone that comes out. Oh, how long does the battery last? Does it get you through the day? Mine only lasts me 10 hours. You know, some, I see some people manage to rip through a whole battery in six hours, for example. I don't know what on earth they're doing. Um, and some people that claim they can't get it to, you know, they, they, even if they leave it alone for, for 12 hours, it still runs out of battery. So I'm going to go through some bits and pieces that can hopefully help you um, extend your battery life to, the, to as good as possible. Um, the first obvious one would be to make sure you remember to turn things off if you're not using them. So Wi-Fi, if you're going out and about, you know you're not going to have need Wi-Fi. Personally, I would suggest turning it off. If it's on and not connected, it's going to be constantly searching what networks are around, what can it connect to. Um, likewise with Bluetooth. I don't think they make a huge difference these days. I think they have optimized it very well that uh, you know, if you leave Wi-Fi on, it may only make a few percent difference through the day, um, rather than perhaps how it used to cost you perhaps 10%, if not more. Um, I'm going to connect it back up. That's the other thing. If Wi-Fi is available to you, a decent, strong Wi-Fi connection, get yourself connected to it, because it will be more uh, battery efficient than the data uh, connection. Secondly, disable apps that you don't use. Now, that's... Uh, if you're on a more recent version of Android, you will find that even, let's go over to all, even the sort of built-in software gives you the option to disable them. But, be wary, it's, a lot of apps do depend on other apps, so I don't go through disabling like 50, then try your phone and see, see, see that it works, find out that it doesn't and not have a clue which of the 50 caused the problem. Go through just a few at a time disabling them, four stop disable maybe even as well, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, if you, don't, if you don't use them, they're only going to take battery, well they might, they're not necessarily going to take battery power up, but there's just no need to have them there. Some of them may take a battery power, would perhaps be a more accurate way of saying it. If you happen to be rooted, if you're lucky enough to be rooted, you can use Titanium Backup. Um, look at your system apps and go through and freeze. I, I would suggest freezing rather than uninstalling the ones that you think you really don't need. You don't use, like, I don't use the built in email, so I've frozen that. I definitely don't need exchange services, so I've frozen that. So, yeah, just, just clear out things that uh, that you're not needing, basically. Um, a similar tone, less widgets is always good. Uh, most widgets are going to be fine, but you will find some widgets that will just hack away your battery. They're constantly processing things. I always remember in the early days of Android, I had a I had a widget that told me how much battery percentage I had left, and it also told me underneath it roughly how long it would last. Now, doing some testing, I realised that actually that increased my battery drain by about twenty percent having that i that that widget there because it kept constantly doing calculations to work out how much longer the uh, the battery would last. Um, most static widgets, like well, like all these three here. I mean, this, these are relatively static apart from when I slide them about. They're not doing any kind of calculations, nor is this one. Again, it moves, but it's not doing anything unless I touch it. It's not doing anything. The weather one will cause a little drain because it's going to update the weather. It's going to download information every sort of hour or so. So that will do a bit. But on the whole, the less widgets you have, the less home screens you have, um, the better your battery will last. So get rid of it. If you really don't need a widget, get rid of it. Definitely, if it's something that is automated, um, just be very careful, I suppose, I would say, and, and, and do some testing, remove it for the day and see if it makes any difference. The final thing when it comes to sort of the, the screen, your appearance and such are wallpapers. A lot of people love, love the old uh, live wallpapers. And why not? I mean, they look gorgeous, don't they, really? It's, it's what separates us from I, um, iOS. But something like that, especially if they're interactive, that is going to increase your battery drain. There's no doubt about it. Some of them, it depends how well they're coded as well. Some of them will will significantly decrease your performance. I mean, this one still moves very slick. Um, obviously helped by the amount of power within the phone itself. 
but you will find some live wallpapers they just they they take up processing power basically and it will slow down your your device definitely it will burn battery so again maybe do some of your own testing some live wallpapers not such a big difference um, others others can be so let's go back in and change my wallpaper back to a static one there we go safer safer option I think one of the biggest things that's going to cause battery drain is is um, things that are sinking in the background because those are the kind of things that go on even if you're not using your phone you know quite often I see on, on forums why on earth am I losing 8% of battery over a four hour period when I've not even turned my screen on or you know 12% overnight my phone's not doing anything untrue if you want your phone to do nothing turn it off or kill the data connection as it is it is going to be doing things trust me so you go into your Google account for example location settings things like that so location access no that's not a good example actually um, there we go into the actual account just check what you've got ticked what you haven't got ticked if you don't use things like I don't need it syncing to Picasso my photos I'll have my Google music I don't really use magazines I maybe use the books so I'll leave it there syncing photos and instant upload is a uh, is a uh, oh, instant upload is separate now is it so syncing photos you know every time you take a picture it's going to upload the picture for you that's going to take quite a bit of, of train syncing gmail well I would imagine you would want that as most of the other things you'd want them and they don't they're not going to cause too much issue um, something like oops I didn't mean to Google something like Facebook though sync into all setting settings so mine are all turned off if you have that set to three hours for example that's every three hours it's going to basically update your Facebook feed that can take quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of time uh, uh, quite a bit of battery power um, I've got a weather app installed here I think we probably need to go into the actual app sorry to check how often so check the settings up so I've got my updated until it's set at four hours I can't imagine the weather's going to change that drastically in a four hour period that I'm going to need to know about it or the forecast is going to change so again you could play it even safer and go to six hours for that matter uh, some apps are quite clever they give you an option so for example, uh, Backitude, where has it gone? There it is. Now, I, I do like Latitude. Latitude's great. Latitude effectively shares my location with a selection of people like my family and friends, but it will use quite a bit of battery because every half an hour it's updating my location to where I am. Now, if I'm not moving for eight hours, if I'm at work or I'm at home, that's quite a waste. So I use an app called Backitude. I have done a video of it, I, don't, I forget if it was on this channel or on my Hemadroids channel. And effectively, um, I use Backitude to steal the location that other apps will take. So let's say I open Foursquare, that looks at where I am to see where it was to check me in. Backitude will go, oh, okay, you just found where Andy is, I'll borrow that and I'll update, I'll update Latitude. So rather than Latitude doing it, Backitude will do it. Um, and it will only do it if I've changed position or if like three hours have passed and I've not updated, it will update. It for me then a uh, very handy app for sort of limiting battery use because latitude can be if you don't use latitude don't worry about it if you're not if you if you go into maps and your location um, reporting is turned off then you don't you don't need to worry about it particularly settings location settings so I am reporting from this device you don't have any control of how often that's reported or if it's if it's only if you've moved a certain distance, which is quite a shame. I mean, I, I know Google like to keep things simple, but it is a shame because that would be uh, that would have been quite handy for them to give you those options. Um, the other thing here is freezing apps. Maps has been frozen. If I've not already uploaded it, there will soon be coming an app uh, a review of Titanium Backup. That lets you freeze apps until you need them. So Google Plus. I found that the chat service would keep my phone uh, in a in a state of partial wake lock. So in other words, you turn the phone off like that, it's probably still awake, it's probably still doing things. After a prescribed time, it will start shutting things down, it will try and go into sleep mode. But if you have something like a messenger service running, it has to keep the phone slightly awake to be able to, to communicate with the servers and with the phone. And that's what's called a partial wake lock. Um, 
In fact, really quickly, I can show you an app here, better battery stats, which again, I've done a video of, I believe. It's going to show me my partial weight locks. And actually, Backitude is the highest one. Uh, iFi Lock Manager, okay, I might need to freeze that sucker as well. So, to stop Maps and Google Plus keeping my phone in a state of partial weight lock, I have Titanium Backup create a widget that when I, when I tap it, it unfreezes the app, runs the app. And then when I'm done, so it's got a little green padlock, I tap it again, it freezes. All I, literally all you do is add widget, select titanium backup, select the one with actions and you'll see it um, unfreeze, run app, freeze, you take that, select the app. Like I said, there is a video on it, have a look. So, syncing, definitely be wary of it. Um, it's the kind of thing that will cause your phone to stay in a state of partial weight clock. Um, next we move on to uh, sort of data and data connections. Now, if we go into more settings, mobile networks, network mode. This is worth having a play with. Um, you will find that some of the modes work better than others. I've got to be honest, I don't know exactly what they all mean, and I couldn't necessarily tell you which is best for your provider, but it might be worth just trying them. It's easy enough switching around. If, if you lose your data connection, go back to a different one, try another one, you don't, you're not going to break your phone in any way. But some of them will show uh, better or more efficient data use than others. Um, I can't remember if you can still do it in here or not, actually. No, you used to be able to limit the... Yeah, no, you used to have to limit your, your phone to just a 2G connection. I was never a real big fan of it, to be honest. Um, in my testing, 2G didn't really help the battery. It just meant that it kept the phone awake longer, trying to recover the data from the internet. Whereas if you're on a 3G, I mean, that's, that's I think, why Wi-Fi is actually more efficient. If you've got a strong Wi-Fi connection, everything's done so quickly, the phone can then go back to sleep. Um, some people will use an app called Juice Defender. So a quick look at that. I'm not a big believer in it, but there it is. Juice Defender Battery Saver. Effectively, what you can do with this is, you can tell it, when I turn the screen off, shut all the data connections down. Um, which is fine. A lot of people would argue, when my screen's off, I don't really want it doing things. You would then miss out on things like someone messaged you on Facebook or WhatsApp. You know, those, those go through the data connection, and that app would stop you from getting those. I also found... It wouldn't always come back on, like, you know, I'll turn the screen back on, or sometimes I'll be waiting 10 or 15 seconds. I might even have to go into settings to re-establish my data connection. That's just too much of a pain in the bum for my liking. But if you're desperate, you know, it's maybe not a bad idea to have it there available to you, um, should you need to uh, to do that. Now, I mean, the other thing as well, a lot of the time these days, you can turn data on and off. So on, if for me, because I'm using JK mod, I've set it up so it is there, I can turn that off. You are no longer be able to use applications on the internet. Blah, 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 blah. Don't show that again. Okay. So now if I turn my Wi-Fi off, I will only have a cell connection. Now, no data. So there's no way anything's going to be syncing in the background when I turn my phone off. You know, that's that's you've effectively turned your phone into uh, like one of the old style Nokia 3310s or whatever. It is literally just using a cell service. You might still have some apps that are doing stuff that don't need data. Um, not many of them though. And again, you can track them down in the better battery stats to see what's keeping your phone in the state of partial weight lock. Um, that should last. I remember going to Ireland with, a, it was an old ATC Hero. I was in Ireland for five days with the data turned off and it lasted all five days without needing charging. Um, but let's put that back on. We should see, there we go, it comes back very quickly. You can get widgets that do the same thing, so if you want to just be able to tap something on your screen, boink, and turn your data off. Um, it's not these days, it's, it's quite simple, it used to be, you had to go in and change the access point settings and stuff like that to turn it off. But yeah, it's very, very simply done these days. I missed quite a simple one earlier actually. Um, it's to do with screen brightness. So again, a lot of, this is a Samsung phone, a lot of Samsung phones let you adjust right there in uh, in the notification bar, but you may need to go into display uh, brightness. Now, a lot of people say use automatic brightness. You can see how much dimmer that got when I, when I did that. 
I like in the Samsung ROMs now you can even change how strong the automatic brightness is. Um, if you really want to save battery, turn turn it off and crank it right the way down. I mean, look how dark that's gone. I can actually still see the screen just fine. Um, I would struggle if I went outside and it was bright, and that is quite an extreme level. If I move it up just slightly, that's I hope you can see that's you know that still looks fine. Now the difference why not use auto automatic? If you if I tap that. The light sensor on the front of the phone is now fairly constantly measuring the light in the room or around the phone and adjusting the screen to match. Now that sounds to me quite an intense thing to do. So if you turn that off and just leave it, leave it uh, at a level you can still read, read, see, um, that is a is a good battery saver. Another thing to do with the screen is is the auto rotation. Now. That will be in different, is it going to be in display? Screen, that's, that's not what we're after. Smart rotation, smart stay. I think actually this, for me, it's, it might well be in my ROM settings. Basically what I'm looking for is the one that top stops it from, oopsie, stops it from monitoring which way around the phone is, like that. Because again, it's only a very simple sort of check, but it is it is still doing checks for you and is adjusting. Whereas if I was to set it to be always, um, that's a bit silly. I can't remember where it is now. Anyway, that's just another thing you can do. Again, a lot of the time you can have it in one of the uh, one of the things along the top. Um, just to turn on and off auto rotation. It won't necessarily save you a lot, but you know, I'm just giving you all the different options that you might want. Um, another great tip, I'm gonna to have to switch to the computer to show you this one. If you go to Gmail on your computer, go into the top right corner and go to settings. Along the top you see accounts and import. then you should see add another email address you own. You basically pop your email address in, treat it as an alias, head on through the steps and basically what this does is Gmail will now sync your other POP3 or IMAP, account, IMAP accounts um, and just filter them all through Gmail. Gmail is, the, is by far the most efficient email client on Android. Um, that well, especially when it uses push now, which means as soon as you get an email, boom, it appears there on your phone. Now, the only problem being it won't sync the other accounts as push because POP3 and IMAP, you know, it, it has to go and check them, as do any, any application you install on your phone. Same, you know, same thing has to go and check the email accounts. Whereas at least the Gmail servers are doing this for you rather than your phone. When the server finds an email, it pushes it to your Gmail. If it's an active email account, Gmail learns that and it checks it more frequently. If it's not very active, it slows it down a little bit. So it might be, you know, I'm looking at mine now that I know are pretty slow and they're, they're all, they've all been checked within the last 32 minutes. Um, so you're never going to be waiting a long time. But if you try and set up a POP3 or an IMAP as like a push service on your Android, that normally means it's just polling the servers a real, really frequently, and that's just gonna kill your battery. I remember doing that on, my, on K9 email. It would rip through a battery in no time. So set this up, set it up so that Gmail checks your accounts and pushes it to your phone through the Gmail app. You can set up filters so that when it comes from a certain account, it tags that account with a label. So you can still keep them separately if you wanted in the folders down the left-hand side, but it is, by far the most efficient way of tracking multiple email accounts, multiple POP3 and IMAP email accounts. Let us know in the comments if you have any trouble, it shouldn't be that hard to set up. The only things really left are the, uh, the slightly more advanced things like in installing different kernels, which may have been optimized a bit. Um, and again, this is really, this is if you're rooted. Um, and you may then want to control your CPU a bit more. Uh, so I have lots of different apps that let you uh, that let you uh, control the processor. Um, some of them let you overclock, like this one. Um, you can also at the same time underclock. 
sounds odd, but you know, if you've got a processor that runs at 1400 megahertz and you generally don't need that much, well, underclock it to 12 if this still works fine. You know, if you're not playing games and such, that's probably plenty. And that will save you a bit of power. Um, you can also, so with set CPU, you can set, as we were looking at with the other one, different profiles, like if it's plugged in, if it's over 50% battery, if it's under 50% battery, perform in different ways. And this one here, vault, you can undervolt your CPU. So basically, again, normally they, they usually provide more power than you really need to the processor so you can you can drop down the the voltages of the different um the different cpu speeds to save power what i would say don't use set on boot until you know it's stable if you if you tick set on boot it crashes because you drop the voltages too low it boots back up with those settings it's just going to crash again and you're stuck in the boot so don't set on boot until you're happy yeah that seems to work fine you know run some games properly stress test it yeah that seems pretty good right set on boot we're locked in but apart from that, yeah, just keep dropping down sort of 20 millivolts, whatever they are, MVs, 20, 30 at a time and until maybe until it crashes, then go back up a bit. And when you're happy, then set on boot. So that's undervolting. That is a bit more advanced, a bit more, uh, it's a bit more risky as well. You know, you could damage it, damage your phone. Not so likely if you're undervolting, but you may, let's say you slide one too high by mistake, you could you could definitely fry your, uh, your CPU unit. And so the only other thing really left to, to know about is to sort of condition your battery. Um, we used to do what's called calibrating your battery. It doesn't happen quite so much these days. The various people have said it's not really worth doing. Um, calibrating it would be to do with kind of run the battery right, well use the battery for 10 days if it's new, run it right down to being dead, fully dead, charge it all the way back up, run it down to being fully dead again, charge it way back up again. And that kind of uh, calibrates the battery, but generally people say it's not really that necessary these days. But you might want to condition it now and then, which is a similar thing. So just just run it down to about 20, remove the battery if you can, if you can, excuse me, put it back in. Don't turn it on. Charge it back up until it's until it should be full. So overnight, perhaps, um, then unplug it, plug it back in again for a couple more hours. Turn it on, and off you go. Things like that. Um, just sort of in theory, they should help the battery a little bit. Also, another sort of slightly odd one. I found sometimes charging via the USB rather than via the mains now and then. Will uh, will extend the battery life. It's one of the things you know. It takes longer to charge with USB, and perhaps it takes a little bit longer for it to drain once it's been charged with USB. I don't know. That might be rubbish. I just I'm sure I've noticed it um, in the past, but I'll leave it up to you to to decide if it's true or not. So there we go. Um, wow, I've done a lot of talking there. My apologies if I bored you. Hopefully, I've uh, given you some really useful tips. Let me know if it's helped, let me know if it hasn't, let me know if they make no difference, drop some comments below, give us your own tips in the comments below. Let's keep it relatively simple though, this is, you know, I'm trying to help, mainly help out sort of beginners on the most part. There you go then, my name's Andy, I'll catch you all again soon.